You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing the devotional that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 they're all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen i encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know god will bless you exceedingly as you do now that the adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and daddy would give you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so today is sunday sunday march the 24th sunday march the 24th and we thank god for bringing us thus far and the title of today's daily devotional is you have no choice part two you have part one sorry you, you have no choice part one so this is a two-day series so we're going to start today and end tomorrow so i encourage you to you know stay tuned not only you know for today but also for tomorrow and always on this channel god bless you and i know we are in church today sunday it's so important the bible says they go from strength to strength everyone that appears before god in zion the bible also tells us that our lord jesus christ he went to the synagogue as his custom was and god has admonished us in the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 that we should not forsake the gathering together of the saints as is the manner of some in these last days you either you are serving the lord fully or you're on the devil's side fully there's no demilitarized zone so you're serving god serving totally with the totality of your being and god bless you as you do praise god so march the 24th sunday march the 24th you have no choice is the title of today's daily devotional part one and our scriptural reading today is from john chapter 15 verses 15 to 16 just two verses john 15 15 to 16 and the amazing thing about this chapter is that everything is in red meaning that all the words of this chapter are the words which were spoken from the mouth of our lord jesus christ so we need to take them very seriously non-negotiable john chapter 15 verses 15 to 16 you have no choice part one and jesus says henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth but i have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made, no, made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. Praise the Lord. <sighs> Glory. Now, henceforth, you know, in this chapter, Jesus Christ said, greater love had no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friend. So Jesus Christ is saying he's not calling us servants anymore. He's calling us friends because the servant doesn't know, you know, the servant doesn't abide in the presence of the father forever. I think we've talked about this recently. Sometime in January, we talked about servants, um, son or servant, I think it was. You know, so the servant, when the master is in the city, for example, the servant can come. But he has to go but the son abides in the presence of the owner forever we as sons we abide as, as friends we abide in the presence of um, the master forever but the servant cannot do that so god is not calling us servants anymore he says we are friends you know um god referred to abraham as his friend shall i shall I, god said shall i shall i be doing something and not let abraham know you know <laughs> seeing that he shall become a great nation so Jesus Christ is saying that we didn't choose him. He chose us and he has ordained us. You know, you may not be ordained in the church yet, but God has already ordained us that we should go and bring forth fruit and our fruit should remain. And that, so that whatever we ask of the Father in his name, God will do it for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. You have no choice. And the memory verse is taken from John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Night cometh when no man can walk. 
we have no choice so um god has jesus christ has ordained us that we should go forth and bring we should go and bring forth fruit and our fruit should remain and he's talking about soul winning he's talking about soul winning and he's reminding us in this memory verse in John 9, 4, that I must, just Christ, I must walk, walk the works of my father while it is day. Because the night cometh when no man can walk. And that can mean different things. It can mean that um, a person, yeah, yeah, the Bible says we should teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, the day, the, uh, there is no walk or device or wisdom or knowledge or knowledge or wisdom in the grave without our ghost. Once a man dies, he cannot add to his works. So and that's what Jesus Christ is like saying, that he must do the works of God do the same thing while it is day. Because night is coming. You know, he knew that the end of his assignment was coming. Night is coming when no man shall walk. Once a man is dead, he can't add to what he has done before. So it can mean that because we have limited time on earth, we must do the works of our Father while it is day, while we have the strength. And then the Bible says we must remember the Lord in the day of our youth. You know, while we still we are still strong, because in old age we may not be able to do do much for the gospel because of old age. God said to Joshua, "You are old now. You are you are, you are stricken." The Bible says he was stricken. <laughs> we're stricken. He said, "You are old now. There's still yet much land to be to be divided." Because when you know old age, you can't do too much. For God, that's why Jesus Christ, I must walk the works of my Father who has sent me while it is the night comment when no man can walk. Jesus, um, that is says in our memory verse for today, the Bible says, I must do the work, not I may do the work. It's neither an option nor a piece of advice. Doing God's work is compulsory for all his children. This simply means that you have no choice in the matter. In the first Corinthians 9 16, Apostle Paul said, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. So it's not an option. I may do the work. Or, you know, it's, I must do the work. Not I may do the work. So it's comparison an assignment that God has given to every one of us. He said we should preach the word. You should do the work of an evangelist. You know, it's doing the work of God. That he says is compulsory. Paul is saying that necessity is laid upon me. And he said, what is me if I preach not the gospel? Praise the Lord. You know, and, and we can do, we can preach the gospel. Why? Because we are born again and we have the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus Christ left the Holy Spirit on earth to help us. The, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to help us, build us up to win souls to others. Otherwise, when we got born again, we would have gone to heaven. And the first thing that, you know, um, we can't give what you don't have. You yourself must be a Christian. It must not happen at work that when you say you are a Christian, people are like, what? You know, Jesus Christ said we should allow our light to sh so shine. And you know, well, Jesus Christ, God, God, God doesn't sponsor flops. He said, I'm the Lord thy God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, I will feel it. So in that hour, we don't need to, when you meet somebody and you want to tell the person about Christ, don't worry, just open your mouth. God will feel it. And you will say, and sometimes you just give the testimony of your salvation. That's all you need to do. You know, but give God an we must give God an opportunity to speak to others. We must make ourselves available. We must come out of our comfort zone, you know, to go out and win souls. Sometimes it may be, you know, it's worse me if I preach not the gospel. So there must be a preaching. There must be a sharing of the word of God. It's the word of God that convicts. It's not just inviting the person to your church. You must preach the word of God. It's when the word of God is preached that the people are pricked in their hearts. Okay, so we must present Jesus Christ of Nazareth first. Before we start inviting to church, praise God, preach the word, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. So we must, it's not we may. When it comes to doing the work of God, you must see yourself as a volunteer. Apostle Paul said doing God's work was a necessity. And he even went ahead to pronounce a curse on himself if he did not preach the gospel. So it's a necessity. You know, I remember in the in the book of Exodus, God said to Moses, Go and tell Pharaoh. Let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. In other words, no one is qualified to live in Egypt until he's ready to serve God. He said, when they have come out, God said that they will serve me on this mountain. When they have come out of bondage. So you're not qualified to come out of bondage until you are ready to serve. And one, way we, one of the major ways we serve God is by preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even Paul placed a curse of himself. He said, what is me if I preach not the gospel? And you know, the Bible says we are debtors in Romans chapter 1 to preach the gospel both to the saved and the unsaved, the Jew and the Greek. And then Paul was saying, as much as is in me, I am ready. 
to preach the gospel. We are ready. You are qualified. We are qualified. You, we can preach the gospel. We can because we have the Holy Spirit. And it says, I'm not ashamed. So I am a debtor. I am ready. I am not ashamed. Apostle Paul clearly did not see himself as a volunteer. God does not use people who see themselves as volunteers. Once God chooses someone, the fellow has no choice but to do the work. And in John 15, 16, God said, you have not chosen me. But he has, God said, you have not chosen him, but he has chosen you. And the moment he chooses you, the moment you find yourself, the, mo the moment he chooses you, the moment you find yourself as a minister of, the, of God, you must do what he wants. In Philippians 1.20, Paul said, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Paul had some convictions as in he sold himself to Jesus Christ. He gave his whole life to Jesus Christ. This was a man that, you know, he said, <laughs> look at this. He said, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Death was nothing. He was not afraid to die at all. You know, and even in the prison, if you look at most of the New Testament was written from his prison, you know, experiences, he was in prison and he was teaching freedom, you know. You know, he was he he the, the ghost he was sold out to Jesus Christ. And he said, I finished my course, you know, I fought the good fight of faith, I finished my course, and now he was so sure he's laid up for me a crown which my heavenly father would, my Lord will give unto me on that day. So he was so he 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 gave all. To Jesus Christ and why not we must do the same so we don't have a choice it's 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 we're going to give account of what the Lord has called us to do the most important thing is that what did God call you to do what is your assignment on this earth now if you say I don't know what my destiny is I don't know what my calling is number one the first thing you need to do is come to Christ which I'm sure you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and if you have not while the pastor is preaching, choose Jesus Christ today. Choose this day whom you serve, you know, and choose Jesus Christ. Once you are born again, make sure you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are ready. You are ready. It is God who is at work in us, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. Just go out. If you don't know what your, your calling is, whether you are calling to the office of a pastor, that's, that's, that's not irrelevant. The first thing that you must do is go out and begin to preach the gospel. Tell the people that Jesus Christ saves. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is your destiny. That's our destiny as Christians. As you begin to do that, God will begin to move you into the place, the exact place that he wants you to be. Workers are not volunteers, but soldiers that must do the, build, the bidding of the one who has called them. 2 Timothy 2, 4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So we are soldiers in the army of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do not, we do not get involved in civilian activities. Do you understand? We are not of the world. So you, you are a Christian. You have, our departure from hell is eternal. You know, we cannot be playing, having one leg in the world and one leg in Christ. You know, the Bible says, who is on the Lord's side? You know, the Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. That's what he means when he says that no man that entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may... No, no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, uh, we, we are soldiers in the army of Christ. We don't get involved in civilian activities. We don't get involved in the world. We do not deal with the pride of, the, of, of life, the, the, the flesh, you know, um, what is in this world? The, the, the love of money, the pride of, you know, the, the pride of life, you know, all those things. You know, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Amen. So those are the things of this world. So we must be separated unto God. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation. We are born again. We are children of God. You know, we can't be living our lives like people in the world. So we do not entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. You understand? If we are serving God, we serve him fully. You know, and if you want to go to the devil's side, go there. But you, there's no demilitarized zone. You're either on the Lord's side or on the devil's side you get why because we want to please jesus christ who died for us who chose us to be a soldier and god trusted us with this gospel you understand whether we like it or not this world is a war front, a war front. we are at war and so we should not distract ourselves with mundane things we must be focused on obeying the commands of our commandant promptly and completely we must do the work required of us by him so that we will be victorious so you see 
Christians, there's a lot. The world's going. To, the Bible says um, darkness is going, to, is going to cover the earth as the waters. You know, the the um, arise, shine your light is come as Isaiah sixty. For the glory of God is risen upon you. Darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon us, the children of God, and His glory shall be seen in us. Things are going to get worse in the world. Economically. Things are going to get worse. We're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be extremities, even in the weather. Things we're moving to the end of the age. So things are going to don't think that things are going to get better. No, no, no. No. But and that the reason the way you will survive is if you are a Christian. If you are you, if you're a Christian and you abide fully by the instructions of the Holy Spirit, God will carry us through. We will not know when drought comes. Darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon us and his glory shall be seen in us. Amen. Our light has come. Praise the Lord. So we are, we are at war. You know, so if you, if you are playing, if you're, if you're still, you are Christian, you're still playing with sin and things that God does not like, you will suffer. You will suffer because judgment is coming. In fact, most of these things we see are judgment, but don't be afraid. Just Christ said, be not of, be, be not afraid, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we don't even have any business with worrying about what is going on with the currency and all that. That's none of our business. All we know is that we are blessed and we are highly favored because God, we are on God's side. Amen. Praise the Lord. There may be darkness in the land of Egypt, but on this side of Goshen, there's light. There's prosperity. There's peace. There's divine health. Amen. So don't distract, don't be distracted. Focus, we look up to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look up, let your eyes be on Jesus. There's no salvation anywhere else. There is no deliverance anywhere. There's neither is there salvation in any other. There's no name given under heaven by which men may be, may be saved, but through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28 verse 19, our commandant, who is Jesus Christ, gave us a command that directs those of us who call ourselves his workers and ministers to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The assignment is very, very clear, and it is a direct order. There is no room for deliberation. Act now. Praise God. And God is talking to all of us individually. Praise the Lord. God wants us, we've come to the end time. His God has made us fishers of men. Just Christ is saying we should go out. So inculcate um, soul winning into your itinerary. Okay, don't let the things of this world, you know, God is God first, family second, and career third. Don't mix them up. It's always God first. So God's work is priority. God's work is priority. We must go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of, you speak in tongues, you have the Holy Spirit. We are qualified. There's no devil that can stand against us. Praise the Lord. We must preach. It's a direct order. Remember, we are soldiers in the army of Christ. Don't no deliberation. We 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 stand in the place where God has put us, and we must do all that is in God's heart and in His mind. The key point is that you must preach the gospel. It's not a piece of advice, but a command of which God will ask us. You have no choice. Praise the Lord. We must preach the gospel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Almighty God. Thank you because God who called us, you are faithful and you will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, help us by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the harvest is ripe and ready, but the laborers are few. And that we should pray to the Lord of the harvest that we send more laborers into the field. Father, Lord, we are available in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Almighty God, to preach God's word. Help us to do the work of an evangelist. Help us to preach God's word. Help us to convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Help, help us to turn many to righteousness. And Father Lord, as we have preached to others, let us not be cast away. Help us so that our fruit and our seed and those that we went to Christ will abide in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. And we are hearers and doers of God's word. And I know that Pastor would build on this in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Pastors, for sharing this in your church. May the Lord bless you exceedingly. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow again on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and the Lord bless you. Have a great day in church. God bless you. Thank you very much. You are my Jesus.